Hey, it's Jared with another Elementor tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to set some defaults in Elementor so you don't keep having to adjust styles and sizes and colors and all of that stuff as you add new elements. This was something I didn't really realize when I first started using Elementor, and once I understood how to customize these things, it saved me a ton of time as I go and make changes to my website. And then, of course, uh, if I wanted to make global changes to the website, it makes it much easier to go and just change these defaults instead of having to go to each element throughout your website and make those adjustments one at a time. So to get to those uh, settings, typically an easy way to get there is if you're already editing a page, you just click on the hamburger menu in the top left-hand corner and go to Site Settings. Under Site Settings and Design System, you've got Global Colors, Global Fonts, and then some other things you can adjust as well. Let's take a look at the Global Colors. We have Primary, Secondary, Text, and Accent. These are the default colors that something is going to, like an element is going to choose when you drop it into place. For example, your primary is going to be something like your, um, your headers. Uh, your secondary might be something like your menu. Your text color is obvious, and then your accent might be something like a shadow um, or a different element within one of these elements. So uh, changing these colors to, to kind of match your design, your styling, is going to be great. If you don't know exactly what colors to choose from yet, one thing that I often use is uh, Adobe Color. It used to be Adobe K-U-L-E-R, but I think it's now just color.adobe.com. And when you go there, there is the Explore tab, which I really like, that shows me lots of color palettes. Um, and this changes, I think, almost monthly. But you can also just type in a color and find color palettes to choose from. And these are colors that are going to complement each other. And it's, it's really awesome to use this because if you're not sure what to choose for these different sections, this is going to help you. So for example, this color palette here has a lot of different colors that I think really look good together. So I might choose this blue color, so we'll copy, we'll click and copy that, and then we'll go back to um, Elementor here and change our primary color to that color. And then our secondary, we might go with something a little bit uh, um, darker, like this. So this is going to be a lot different than it was. We'll choose that color. For text, we'll go with that and put that in text. And then for accent, we can go with this really light color. And we'll throw that in place there. And then we'll click Update, and it's going to change those colors. So you'll notice that it actually did change the color of uh, this heading down here below already because I hadn't already customized that. So it was set to default. And since we just changed the default, the global defaults, it went ahead and updated that already. Pretty cool. Now under global fonts, we can also change things like the default font sizes. I've often found that when I drop in a heading, or a header, it's always at 40 pixels and that's way too large for me. So I might change uh, that to 30 so that it just starts out smaller. Um, I can also change secondary. This is where I would change fonts uh, in these different sections. Um, this is where I would change whether something was more or less bold. I can make it always uppercase so you can see um, that uh, you know future items that are not customized with their font would, uh, would show up uppercase. This one did not change down here because I did change the font size already, so it's not set to default anymore. I can also do the same thing for text and accent, and then I'll just click update to make sure that those changes are saved. Now, buttons are something that I often use on my site, and when I throw in a button, it's going to utilize the global colors as uh, the button elements, which is fine, the colors for the button. But if I want to change the sizes and the way that the button is going to appear, I can customize that as well here. Not just the way the button appears, but also how it responds when you hover over it. So you can see here, normal, the button's color is going to be just a default color, and then the hover is going to be this 
lighter blue color. And so I can customize that here rather than having to change that later. I can do the same thing for uh, images. If I want all the images that I add to my website to have a border radius, rounded edges, I can set that here so that I don't have to customize that every time I go into another image. Now, it doesn't by setting these global settings, it doesn't mean that I can't go and make changes later. So, for example, if I set a border radius to all of my images so that when I drop in a new image, it automatically has a border radius on it, if there's a section I don't want a border radius, then I just go and make that change to the style of that particular image. So at this point in time, I can decide what is the most likely border radius that I would want on an image. If it's none, I don't even change it. If I do want to change it, I can do that here. And the same thing for every other element that's in this section. Form fields is another good one. If you're going to use Elementor forms, then you can customize those here so that as you put forms throughout your website, they all look consistent without having to change the settings on each and every form. So changing these default site settings uh, is just really great. It definitely helps you get a lot accomplished on your website um, and saves you a lot of time from having to go and customize all of those elements. So I, I recommend setting these things at the beginning of your design before you even get started building headers, footers, or anything else. Setting these global settings are going to save you a ton of time as you build out the rest of your website. So that's going to do it for this tutorial. Make sure to check out the links in the description. You can get access to my course for free, my Elementor course where you can learn everything that there is to know about Elementor. Uh, if you're interested in Skillshare, you can get with the link below a free trial of Skillshare and watch my course for free as well. There is also a lot more tutorials available. If you subscribe to the channel here, you'll get notified when those tutorials come out. And then of course you can go on and watch uh, many of the others that are already uploaded and there's new ones being uploaded every other day. So if you have any questions, definitely ask down in the comment section below, but that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for being here and I hope to see you back in another one. Take care.